I'm going to be honest with you. This is going to be the worst problem that we see for solving radical equations. For the simple reason that we have two radicals. It always makes things more difficult. But we're still going to follow our procedure. And it says to get a radical by itself. Now, we already have that here. And if you have multiple radicals, the one that you want to isolate is going to be the one that has the more complicated looking radicand. This one has two pieces, two terms. This one only has the 3x. So I would say keep this one by itself, apply the power property. So I'm going to raise both sides to the second power. Now watch out here. You got to see stuff like this show up in the homework or on your test. You're not squaring each of these pieces. You're squaring this entire side. On the left side, it's fairly straightforward because you square the square root and you're just left with the radicand x plus 1. On the right side, we can again think about that formula. When you square a binomial, you get a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. So when you think about how does it work for this particular example, well, you've got the square root of 3x minus 1 squared. So this is acting as your a, and that's your b. Now again, you could try to foil this out by writing the square root of 3x minus 1 times the square root of 3x minus 1. But if I follow this pattern up here, that means that I would take a, which is this guy, squared, plus 2 times a, which is the square root of 3x, times b, which is negative 1, plus, you're going to take negative 1 squared. All right, so let's see what this looks like. So when I square this square root, I just get 3x. Let's see what happens here. I've got 2 times that negative, but I can't do anything with the stuff inside the radical. So this becomes negative 2 times the square root of 3x. And when I have negative 1 squared, that's just positive 1. So when I square it out using that property, that's what I get. And again, if you don't like that, you can always foil it out. And you should get the same thing. You better get the same thing. All right, so this is 3x minus 2 times the square root of 3x plus 1. So we've gone from having an equation with two radicals to an equation with just one radical. So we've got to go back to what the process says. And it says to isolate a radical. I only have one radical left, so let's get this guy by itself. And we can do that by moving these two terms that are not connected to it to the other side. So we're going to subtract 3x on both sides, like this. And we're going to subtract 1 on both sides. And let's see what we have. x minus 3x is negative 2x. Uh, 1 minus 1 is 0, so that guy's gone. Equals, and I get negative 2 times the square root of 3x. And at this point, it's really in our best interest to go ahead and get rid of that negative 2. And so we're going to divide both sides here by that coefficient of negative 2. All right. And so now we have just x equals these guys reduced. And I have the square root of 3x. All right. So now that radical is by itself, we go back and we apply the power property to undo that square root. So we're going to square both sides of the equation like this. And now we're left with x squared is equal to 3x. So please don't think that the square is going to square the 3 because the square has to hit the square root first. Those guys cancel each other out, leaving us with just the radicand. And now here, x squared is equal to 3x. Believe it or not, this is something that's quadratic. So in order to solve this, we want to move everything to the same side. So let's go ahead and move that 3x over here by subtracting 3x. And let's factor. 
Now, one of the things that a lot of people forget about with factoring is that you always look for the greatest common factor first. So there's a common factor between these two terms of x. So factor that out. We are left with x minus 3. And from here, we just solve this by setting each factor equal to 0. So that means x is equal to 0, or the other factor x minus 3 is equal to 0. Well, this guy right here is already solved for, so you don't need to do anything else. But over here, move the 3 to the other side, so x equals 3. But remember, we can't just jump into this and circle both of these answers. We've got to check our work. So we're going to do that again off to the side. So let's start with our first solution. Let's check x equals 0. And whenever you check this, you always go back to the original equation. So let's see, where were we? Right here. I want to see, is the square root of 0 plus 1 equal, does that equal the square root of 3 times 0 minus 1? Let's see, this gives me the square root of 1. Uh, that's the square root of 0 and then minus 1. So this gives me 1. That's 0, so that, you know, who cares about that guy? And we get negative 1. So we can see here that these guys are, they're not equal. And here's why. Here's why we're so close, but it just doesn't work. Whenever I have the square root sign, at just as it is, that square root symbol is the principal or the positive square root. So even though the number 1 has two square roots, it's got 1 and negative 1 as square roots, when I use this sign, when I use this symbol, I'm only asking for the positive square root, which I get, which is positive 1. And that does not equal negative 1. So that tells me that this guy right here is extraneous. Again, we didn't do anything wrong, okay? It just didn't check in the original equation. All right, we have one more solution to check, and that's x equals 3. So let's check x equals 3 and see what we get there. So looking back up at the original equation, we have the square root of 3 plus 1. I want to know, does that equal the square root of 3 times 3 minus 1? All right, well, let's see. This gives me the square root of 4. This is the square root of 9 minus 1. The square root of 4 is 2. The square root of 9 is 3 minus 1. And, oh, look at this. 2 equals 2. So that guy checks out. That one did not. So we have just one solution here. And that is the solution x equals 3. So it's very important that you go back and you check your solutions in the original equation.